Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've been talking for a while about uh, putting aluminum heads, uh, aluminum intake, and uh, a Holley Sniper fuel injection system on, uh, on my 71 Corvette. And I was gonna wait till it got a little cooler out and everything, and um, I was planning on doing it like maybe the first of next year, February, March, something like that. Well, uh, I decided uh, Thanksgiving, uh, um, someone had a Black Friday sale, um, had free shipping and uh, some price cuts on some stuff. So I, I decided to go ahead and order my stuff now. So anyway, uh, this video, I'm just going to kind of show you the parts I ordered and kind of explain why I ordered what I ordered. And then uh, I'll do upcoming videos on the uh, tear down of the engine, taking the old heads and manifold and carburetor off and then I want to double check my timing because <laughs> with the head off I can definitely see top dead center on my number one cylinder make sure that my timing mark when I have it on zero is true top dead center and double check my my uh, cam timing with crank and then we'll I'll do videos I'll probably do a video putting the heads on and then a video doing the intake and a video doing the uh, the Holly Sniper because I think it'd be too much to put in one video. So anyway, let me get the camera reset and I'll kind of show you the parts and stuff that I've got so far. Okay, what I've got here, I've got the invoice and I'm going to show you the part numbers, um, the cost, and Florida sales tax, $179.25. Uh, depending on your vehicle, these part numbers will vary. This is for a small block Chevy and I wanted to go with um, just parts that would interchange. I wouldn't have to do anything special. And I'm finding out now, I, I got everything in and I started opening stuff and kind of glancing through instructions. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is the heads. Uh, the heads to me look really nice. I, I mean, they, they come complete. They got the, the valve springs, seals, um, rocker arm studs, uh, the guide plates for the push rods and they're completely machined and just looking at them they look very nice saying that <laughs> after i ordered them uh, i went on youtube and watched a few videos about um, installing these aluminum heads and and getting some ideas on that and there were several videos on there of guys that have machine shops that that say even though Elderbrock sells these bolt on out of the box that that's not always the case and they showed some issues where the um, valve seat was not concentric with the bore of the valve guide up to eight to ten thousandths run out which is way unacceptable so I called um, a machine shop up in Chiefland, Florida at the Napa store. They have a very good performance machine shop there that I found out about after I had my engine rebuilt at another place that had some issues if you watched my previous videos. Anyway, I talked to the man there and he said what he suggests I do first, the simplest thing is do what they call a wet test on it, where I'll pour gasoline down through the intake ports and the exhaust ports. I guess that's the exhaust ports, the intake ports are on this side and let it sit and see if any gas seeps past the valve. If it does, that's, that's a good indication that they aren't concentric with each other and the valve isn't closing completely. And then the other thing he suggested doing, if I want to go a step further, is take all the valves out, get some valve lapping compound, put it on the valve seat or on the, on the valve, put it in there and just spin it. You don't have to really get aggressive with it, just enough to, to sort of mark that valve seat and mark the valve and it will show if it's hitting all the way around, if it's hitting off on the um, valve seat, or if for some reason the valve would be out around, it would show that too. So if, if, I, if I put fuel in it, I don't get any leakage, I'm probably not gonna go any further as far as investigating these. This is just a stock motor, it's not high performance, and they're gonna be driven like a maniac. I'm just gonna drive it as a nice fuel economical driver so it's not going to be punished it's not going to be beat to death and i just hope that if they don't leak they're close enough that they also won't break over time because if you're off eight ten thousandths every time that valve closes it's shoving over 
one way or the other until it centers up, which is flexing that valve stem, putting pressure on the valve guide, and something's got to give eventually. Again, I'm hoping I don't have that issue. Uh, he seemed to think that if, if I could put fuel in them and it didn't leak past, that they're close enough within tolerance that I shouldn't have a problem. And again, it's just going to be a stock low-performance driver. The other thing you can do with these heads is you can go in and you can, you know, you can port these out a little bit, kind of smooth them up in here, same way on the intakes. And then also on the, let me get this flipped over if I can without damaging anything. Also here uh, on the valve valleys or um, the cylinder valley, whatever you call this, you can go in there with a with a stone and slick this all up so you get better fuel flow and airflow in there. They're actually a lot smoother than what I was expecting. So again, I'm not trying to set the world on fire here with this motor. I just want something that's going to be dependable and fuel efficient and run decent. So I don't think I'm going to mess with that. They also show where you can come in, which these don't look that bad. I just wonder if maybe they were doing an older set. but this land here was over further closer to the diameter of the valve seat so that as the valve opened the f the flow passed on this side you were losing some of that because it couldn't get around there and they were actually coming in a machine in this back to where the head gasket would sit and just kind of cutting a radius out of here down to the valve uh, looking at mine i don't really think it's necessary to me there's enough of a gap there and that looks about like how much they were machining in there so i'm thinking maybe they changed their design on the heads at some point but um there's in theory you should be able to bolt these on and they'll do just fine like i said you can come in here and do a little bit of machining you know here or uh, grinding out to kind of get rid of those steps. You can see a little step down in there where they only cut down so far with an end mill. You can go in there and clean that out and uh, you know if, if you're trying to drag a race or you want a, a car that's going to scream you want to you want to do all that. I'm not going to worry about it. The good thing I like about Elderbrock, they're made in USA. You know it says right there on the box. You can go on YouTube and watch videos. You, of, of their factory making these parts in the United States, out in California, I think it is. And then like on their intake, they actually have a plate, which I think is kind of cool, uh, glued to the front of the uh, intake manifold. So the one thing I want to I want to uh, caution you guys on when you start buying this kind of stuff, which I never thought about it either. Uh, you know, I thought I could use my stock rocker arms and push rods well, I'm reading in the instructions here, I just kind of glanced through it. I'm not going to get too far into this until I get ready to do the heads. But, but in here it says, um, find it here. Right here, it says you need a hundred thousandths longer than stock hardened push rods. And, um, for use with stamp steel rock arms or with 64 cc heads in some cases which i've got 64 cc heads so um i kind of wish it would have said something like that in the catalog or, or online or when i talked to the salesperson that oh by the way you might need to do that so i'm going to call them it's too late today to call them i'm going to call them tomorrow and find out if i need those push rods if i do i'll go ahead and get those ordered and then the other thing is I didn't think about until after I ordered these uh, with aluminum heads normally you use a spark plug that's got longer threads because uh, you don't want to rip those threads out there if you you know you put a short spark plug in there and tighten it down you might strip those threads out so they make them longer so they they have more strength to them so I got to I got to find out which spark plug I need to order to do do that but anyway that's the head so far on the intake um, it's pretty much cut and dried. It's got to be a square bore, dual plane intake. I wanted one that would fit under the hood of my vet with the Holly Sniper on it with my stock air cleaner. So this is basically stock intake height. To me, it looks a little bit higher than that. I'll have to measure that. And, and to measure that, uh, and I'll show when I do the video, you put a straight edge on here and measure it down from the front to the back because it slopes a little bit, and then you average out the two measurements you get and do that on your stock one and it'll tell you what the 
height is here. So anyway, that's the manifold. Uh, the heads, let me get back to the heads here real quick. The heads are 5089 um, small block Chevy E Street cylinder heads, and they're complete. You buy them by the pair. Some things you got to buy uh, heads separately. Some of them you buy them, they're bare. You got to put the valves and springs and everything in them. And, and this particular set, it's kind of a entry level into a little bit of performance parts. So you, you get the heads, the valves, everything you see here. Uh, for a pair of them for the price, and they were, uh, let's see, they were $1,193.95 for the pair. They were on sale. And then on the intake, this is a 2701 Performer uh, EPS intake manifold. I again, it should fit in place of the stock one on in the stock height and everything, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I did order new head bolts and this is the kit number uh, they're ARP you can get cheaper ones from Summit uh, but ARP they, 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 they're a really good uh, fastener they make all kinds of different fasteners and uh, the head bolt kit was $84.99 I did not I did not buy new bolts to put my intake on because I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet. Uh, the other thing I got it was for like a buck ninety nine. It's assembly lube you put on your um, your head bolts so when you torque them you get a good true torque on them. You want to make sure you do that. And then I, I think on a couple of the head bolts they might go into water jackets so you want to make sure you put a silicone on those threads. So just be aware of, of what you're doing and what, what engine you have and what, what's required of that. Every, everything comes with, um, you know, little booklets with all the instructions. So you want to be sure and read through those very carefully. They've got a, a preliminary checklist in there. And make sure um, you're doing everything according to their checklist so you don't miss something and damage something or you don't get the performance out of it because you didn't follow the instructions. So I'm going to take those in tonight. I just got... I got all these parts in yesterday except the heads, and the heads just came in about 15 minutes ago, so that's why I'm doing this now. But anyway, I'm going to take all these in tonight and uh, sit down and look through them all really good before I call Summit tomorrow in case I have any other questions. The other thing I did, I purchased um, a gasket set, and this is pretty much a um, complete gasket set. It's a Felpro, that's a part number there. For a small block Chevy, it's, it's pretty much got every, everything you need. Uh, from the oil pan on up to the uh, intake gaskets. Uh, I won't use all these because I'm just doing the upper upper end of the engine. I'm not tearing down the lower lower the bottom half of the engine. Uh, so I'll just have a few left over. But that was actually cheaper than trying to just buy individual gaskets for what I needed. And that way, just in case, make sure I will have everything I need. Because the one thing I wasn't thinking about either is the fuel pump with the Holly Sniper, you have to put a high pressure electric fuel pump in. So I'll be taking the manual original fuel pump off the side of the block and I need a gasket there and I also need a solid cover plate to put over that. And I didn't think about that until after I ordered everything. Again, I can go down to the parts shop here in town and I can pick one up locally. So it's not that big a deal. So anyway, then the last thing I've got here is the Holly Sniper. Uh, originally I was looking at going with the Elderbach I think it's a was a Pro 4 Superflow or something like that. It's a true fuel injection system. It's very expensive, and again, because of what I'm doing here, I, I I don't need that kind of performance. I just need something that works like a carburetor, is dependable, and will make the car run really good. So I I decided to go with the Holly Sniper. There are several other companies that make. Um, a throttle body fuel injection like this. I, I mean, um, I, I think Jagus has their own brand. I, I'm, Summit might even have them. I'm not sure. Uh, Elderbrock has them. Holly has them. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, FitTech, I think, or FiTech it's called. They're all basically the same. It just seems like the Holly has a little bit better reviews and, and uh, re you know, replies on performance and everything and dependability. I think they all can have issues, uh, especially because the computer that controls this is actually inside this throttle body. And I know one of them was having issues with interference from like the radio or the ignition and stuff, and it would affect the performance of this, you know, it would throw it off. 
and uh, you had to do a little bit of things to isolate it, and it was fine, but there was issues with that. I, I don't know if Holly's got that kind of issue or not. Uh, I didn't really see a whole lot about that. Um, I ended up ordering the sniper kit and the fuel um, supply kit in one kit for one price, and it was, uh, let's see here, the high, it was $1,472.45. Again, it was on sale, so I, I think normally it'd be a couple hundred bucks more than that. But if you only, if you already got an electric fuel um, pump on your car and you only need the, um, the fuel injection part of this kit, this is what you'll get, what you see right here. This, which is a throttle body, this comes with the instructions. It looks like some gaskets. Um, it's got this here that's, uh, it's got a relay and some of the wiring involved there. I don't know what that plug-in is. And then it's this box here, which has uh, basically the the, um, the programming controller here and some more wiring and stuff. You've got your, um, oops, let me get the camera here. you got your O2 sensor, and there's a, a plate you have to put into your, your exhaust pipe. Uh, this is the uh, ignition coil driver. This is all in this kit here. Oh, and there's a temperature sending unit too that you also have to use. So um, that all would come with the, with the throttle body uh, set up. And it's got all the, the wiring already on the carburetor and it's quick plug-ins for everything. So uh, it should be fairly easy to set up, I hope. And it's supposed to be self-learning. So all the videos I watch on YouTube, the guys, they put them on and it fires right up. So um, I hope that's the case. And then um, with the, uh, the fuel install kit, um, it, it comes in one big box like this if you buy them both together. And um, then they're in two individual boxes or separate like this inside that box. And this is everything that comes with the fuel kit. There's a fuel pump. It's got an inline filter. Um, that is... Oh, it's got two filters, that's right. It's got, this one goes before and after. The fuel line and all the fittings you'll need. Um, they're kind of like alien fittings, it looks like. So, in theory, I should have everything I need to install this on my car. Uh, there might be a few little things I might need, like hose clamps or something. I mean, it's got, it's got a bunch of hose clamps with it. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to see. So anyway, that's pretty much all the parts I've got so far. I'll just start making videos of tearing all this down and putting it all back on and double checking my timing. And hopefully when it's all back together, it runs really good. It's still, it's running a lot better, but it's still got, um, it's still just got a little bit of a miss to it. And I know I've got issues with that carburetor. The uh, the primary um, meridian holes uh, are dripping underneath the carburetor. They the company that I bought it from they rebuilt the carburetor and they put epoxy on it, but it's it's leaking past that epoxy. So I'm having an issue with every time I go to start ever set for a while the bowl drains down. I got to pump it and and uh, crank it a few times and it fires off and runs. But it's still got that little weird mist to it, like it's just not quite right. And I've I played around with uh, um, the idle screws, uh, adjusting them and out. I tried doing it with vacuum. I tried just doing it by ear. I, I got it running the best it's ran just by doing it by ear and just turn a little bit of time, driving a little bit, and trying it a little more and back and forth. And I finally got it running. It runs actually pretty good. It's just got that one little weird. I just don't think it's right yet. But uh, anyway, hopefully I get all these parts on and I'll take care of that. Thanks for watching my videos and um, I will get set up and we'll start shooting videos of changing all these parts out so you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video